Well, I was filming a tire video and my neighbor's house went on fire. I said, oh Lord Jesus, it's a fire. I just put it out. Ain't nobody got time for that. How about that? County Police, 901, what is the location? Hey, uh, neighbor's house is going on fire. Hold on for the fire department. Okay. Thank you! County Fire Rescue 38, the address of the emergency. What do we got going on? Neighbor's house is going on fire. It looks like the, the feed in is short now. <laughs> okay, we got somebody coming. You see flames and smoke coming out of it? Oh, yeah. Do you know if anyone's <laughs> in there? I don't know. Okay, and it's a private residence? Yeah, his cars are in the driveway. Do you know if anyone's in the house or how many floors or stories is the home? Well, one floor. I'm banging on the door right now. All right. No one's injured that you know of, right? No. Okay. And you see, what do you see? Flames coming out of the window? Uh, flames coming out of the side where the uh, the main line goes into the house by the meter. Okay. We got somebody coming, okay? As you know, we would advise you to get away. <laughs> All right? So they're on their way, okay? Sounds good. Thank you. 901. Thank you. Police 898. What is the location? Yes, uh, what do you think? Uh, a fire department. Uh, Sir, we already have it. Just stay on in case they have any other questions. Stay on it? Just stay on the line. County Fire Rescue 27. Yeah, it's still calling us about a uh, house on fire. Okay, do you know what the address is? What happened? Do you know what the address is? What, what's, uh, what's that number right there? Uh, I think it's electric line. It's popping. Okay, do you see flames or smoke? Oh, yeah, it's popping. Sir, is the house on fire? Yeah, the house is on fire, yeah. Okay, where is it coming from? The side, the electric. Like where the wires come into the house? Where the electric panel is, but it's popping at the pole, too. It just, it just, just fell down. Yeah, I guess it's an electrical fire. The wires fell down from the pole. You there? Okay. We have, okay. we have help coming over there, sir. Is okay. everyone out of the house? Is anybody in the house still? Nobody's answering the door. All right, we have help going over there, sir. If anything worse okay. changes before the fire department gets there, call us back immediately, please. Okay. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. County Police, 901. What is the location of your... Okay, my next door house, David's house is on fire. Yeah, we have police and firemen all coming. It's coming. You're on the south side. You see flames there? Oh, uh, let's see. I'm on... You're on the, the south side. side. Right. Yes. And do you see flames on that side? John, do you see flames? My husband's outside. Wait a minute, ma'am. That's okay. No, that's okay. We have a, we have a, a off-duty officer out there as well. That's okay. fine. Everyone's, thank everyone's coming. You're welcome. Okay, thank you very no much. No problem. Da, da, da. Snowy day, cold, 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 flat tire, shoot, gotta address that. What's up guys, I'm Dan H and welcome to the project. I actually had a nice little morning planned out here, a nice little day, and, and I came outside, opened the garage, I saw that the uh, the Grey Hornet over here, it just it just wasn't sitting right. Wondering why it looks a little lower on this side, and it didn't take long for me to figure it out. I just peeked around the side and saw that front tire looking a little bit flat. So let's uh, let's change the tire. Simple stuff. Oh, I think I found the problem already. What the heck is that? The problem with being a driveway mechanic is, well, things get buried in the snow when it snows out. Uh, got a bunch of jack stands that are buried and frozen to the ground, but I was able to chip out this little one. I got a jack stand and wood we're gonna use to support this vehicle. Now, I usually use the wood because in the summertime, and the asphalt is hot, driveway melts a little bit, and you get these little uh, corner creases in your driveway. But it's frozen now. It probably won't budge, but I'm going to use it anyway because 
I don't know, I'm just used to doing it. I usually jack up the front axle by the control arm bracket, and then it allows me to slide the jack stand right up under the axle for safety. Gotta go ahead and relieve some of the pressure on this. There we go, and then I'll give it a half a pump back up. So I got pressure on the axle in two spots, double the safety, double the fun. Double your now we can take off this tire. Alright, I was ready to just zip off these lug nuts because I had a nice little Saturday plan. I was going to go to Home Depot, maybe Bed Bath & Beyond. I don't know if I'll have enough time. It's actually a pretty nice little Saturday. We're, uh, we're going to go to Home Depot, maybe Bed Bath & Beyond. I don't know. I don't know if we'll have enough time. But I realized if you're changing your tire, it might not always be as easy as it is in your driveway with your tools. See, I didn't even have to crank these loose before I jack this up because I was going to use my impact. But if you don't have a big dog impact gun, what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to crack these loose before you lift this up because you're going to need the ground to put the pressure on the wheel so it doesn't spin on you like that when you pull. So I'll show you what you're going to need out in the streets uh, with the factory tools. Also, that might help you out if you don't have any extra stuff extra stuff being a tool bag and fire extinguisher also i have a, a jumper kit i got jumper cables in here i also have a, one of those little portable jump packs that you hook up to the usb and you charge it up and then it gives you a nice little jolt of juice to get it started also extra stuff being a, this is a little duralast two and a half ton jack this is good enough to change a tire pretty easy out in the streets and here we go this is important this is a nice four-way tire iron now the factory lug nuts are those stupid little acorn three-quarter or 19 millimeters and i have better solid steel ones which is actually 21 millimeter so as you can see this is the factory acorn lug nut i can't stand these because well this cap usually comes off and then you're not working with a 19 millimeter you got like an 18 and a half thing going on they spin they strip and your tire ends up being stuck to your jeep so i replace them with uh bigger thicker lug nuts and the factory size won't fit you gotta spin it to this bad boy there we go here's a 21 millimeter this will get the job done this tire is firmly planted on the ground so you give this a good crank to loosen up the lug nuts and then you can jack the tire off the ground but we're going to pretend we don't have all this extra stuff which i highly recommend again that you keep with you at all times because you never know let's go check out what the factory stuff has from the factory your jeep should include oh hey look at this tasty little treat oh, i got a dub it's uh an amp to power a sub maybe we'll hook that up one day try this again on the passenger side so the passenger side we have a factory tire iron hovering right over the factory amp hey some more aftermarket wiring and there we go these three pieces are what you're going to use to take off the tire and jack up the vehicle so we'll set these tools down right there We'll pull out our little mat right there. Then we're going to open up the spare tire cover. And there she is. We've got a factory full size spare, and the factory jack is right under there. There you go. You don't have to take it off completely. This little hook can slide out. Then you pull this out. The tire is free. And in your spare tire, well, well, I got extra extra center caps. You never know when these plastic things are going to break. So I can <laughs> break because you toss them. So I keep mine off to the side or in there. And here's your factory jack. You're just going to loosen this up a bit because it's wedged in here. And you could yank it out. And this is what you would use to jack up your vehicle. Obviously, mine's already jacked. The quick and easy driveway way 
But if you are in the streets, you would want to find a nice, safe place on this unibody frame rail. Also, if you are going to use this bottle jack, I recommend doing it on a nice flat surface. It's difficult to change a tire on the side of the road in sand and junk and mud. So drive a little ways on your flat to get to a nice safe parking lot or something. And if you want to use the factory jack, you're going to open and close it with the included Jeep factory hardware. This just slides right in here. And you could use this as leverage. You know, spin it until it hits the ground, flip it around, and then keep spinning until it expands. And then obviously you do the same thing to close it. So, yep, yeah, that is the factory hardware in case you ever need it. When you're putting this back away, make sure this is locked in here and there's a little tab in a hole that locks in right here. This will keep it from rattling around in your trunk. Trunk noises could drive you crazy if you can't figure out where it's coming from. There we go, nice and tight, mounted securely. And if you're wondering what this is, this is my fuel pump access hole. This is actually a fix to a hole that was just chopped into this Jeep. So go ahead and watch that video if you're curious. All right, back to your regularly scheduled program, 21 millimeter. All right, this looks like this is our thing, whatever that is. It's gonna mark it right here. Is that a key ring, something, I don't know. Cotter pin, it loops around and goes right into the tire, right there. So I'm guessing that's what's causing the leak. I'm gonna go yank it out. Oh, broke right off. Yeah, <sighs> Got it. What are you? There it is. Don't know what it is, but it left a decent little hole in my tire. All right, got my patented Dan H. Soapy water. Got an endless supply of this stuff, because it's mine. <laughs> oh yeah. See, it was definitely leaking there. No doubt about that. Bubbles. This is my little tire patch kit. So I got this little T-handled punch and uh, it's gonna ream out the hole so we could fit a plug in there. So we're just gonna punch this into the tiny little hole, ream it out a little bigger. It's gonna let us fit one of those licorice plugs in. Oh, that hole was a little too small to work with. There we go, now the air's coming out. Unfortunately, we are making the hole bigger, but on the positive note, we'll be able to plug her up. Now we're gonna take the other half of this kit. This is got the little hook in there. We could put this little sticky licorice stick. We're gonna kinda of mash this right through. Sometimes you might need to pull it through with pliers. There we go, halfway is good. I've heard of a few different techniques. Uh, a lot of people like to use this rubber cement that's usually included in the kit. Uh, there we go, rubber cement. This is empty, so I'm not going to use that. And, well, it's freezing out. So I've seen a lot of people light these things on fire. Makes them more pliable, and it's gooey, and uh, it should stick a little better. So since it's, uh, yeah, 32 degrees out, let's see if we can torch this thing. There we go. It's nice, it's ooey gooey, and it stinks. So let's plunge it in. All right, we got about an inch of it sticking out on both sides. I'm just gonna pull this straight back out. There you have it. She's all plugged up. All right, I'm just gonna snip off the excess and just melt down whatever else is sticking out. 
mash that in. Burning rubber. All right, turn this baby on. We'll do 45. It's a good all around PSI for this tire. Uh, there we go, 45. And hit play. Well, I was filming a tire video and my neighbor's house went on fire. I just put it out. How about that? It pays to have a fire extinguisher in your Jeep. Here they come. <laughs> Power line just started sizzling. I thought people were putting uh, firecrackers in a pot like Home Alone. Next thing I know, the line is on fire, and uh, yeah, flames in the house. <laughs> Hopefully, uh, we got it in time before there was any damage. I called my neighbor, he's at work, no animals in the house. I got his code so we didn't have to break down the door. All is well. And we did get to save his. Right hand dry up, oh, blocked it. His Nissan Cedric. That's my Cedric neighbor. Gotta love your neighbor. All right, back to the tire video. All right, well, it stops and we know the tire is inflated. We'll just check for more leaks. We will look, listen, and feel. That's some fire safety right there. Nope, no more leaks. I think it's good. Well, back to your regularly scheduled program again. This time I had to take a break because of a little house fire. My neighbor's house sort of went up in flames. And luckily for me, we had fire extinguishers. Well. I guess luckily for them, uh, my house would have been all right. But uh, I grabbed a good old Jeep fire extinguisher and put out the fire on the uh, the electrical panel. For some reason, something shorted out. I don't know. I'm not an electrician, but their panel was burning. Their service wire basically uh, went up in flames, melted off, and uh, yeah, there was some fire. So I put it out. Oh look, power company finally showed up. So, yeah, I'm uh, gonna put this tire back on. It has been plugged. Now, just remember, a plug is not uh, a DOT approved repair. If you want this thing uh, legal to pass inspection, you're gonna have to go to a tire shop and they'll put a patch on it. That's the legal way. But uh, we got a plug in an emergency, so this will get us home safe. Work this in a star pattern, of course. And when all is said and done, guys, don't forget to put a good spare back in your Jeep. What happens is you'll put the good tire on the Jeep, and then you'll put the flat tire in here. And you'll forget about it, so don't forget it fix it, fill it, and then you'll have a nice spare ready to go in the future. So we're gonna put everything back in the Jeep and be on our way. All right, there you have it. Got our trunk buttoned up with all our emergency gear in case we get another flat. Hopefully we won't. Uh, yeah, this flat is all repaired. It is no longer flat. So well, that's that. What a crazy day, guys. I did not expect my neighbor's house to go on fire while I was changing a Jeep tire. Holy smokes, indeed. So <laughs> that's it, guys. Uh, remember to like and subscribe. I'll catch you guys on the next project. All right, guys, before my second attempt at Home Depot, I just want to tell you that 
Uh, this morning did not go the way I planned it. I never expected to have a flat tire. Uh, even though I was able to make a YouTube video out of it, I just, uh, it is not what I wanted to do today. I should have been running errands, taking care of the things I needed to do. But without that flat tire, I wouldn't have been home to help put out that fire. So um, just remember that no matter what you're going through, even if it's as simple as a flat tire or or a bigger problem that you are right where God wants you to be. You can still serve his kingdom. You can still make a difference in someone else's life. Maybe a bad morning for you could be changed around by helping someone else. So just remember that, guys. Keep your head up. And uh, that's it. I'm off to Home Depot, Bed Bath & Beyond <laughs> to finish my day. So, uh, all right, guys. Thank you for watching. Uh, remember to like and subscribe. And I'll catch you guys on the next project. Peace.